Welcome to another episode of College Town Talk. I'm Jonathan Frank. And I'm Shan Stout. Shan, I'm getting a little sentimental over here. It's our season finale. That can't be possible. I feel like we just got started. <laughs> I do too. But in fact, this is our 29th episode of the program. We've had some incredible guests and great conversations about life in Tennessee's college town. And we're not going away, just taking some time off for the summer. But Shan, it has truly been a privilege to make this podcast each week with you. Well, I feel exactly the same. And the nice thing is, apart from all the wonderful interviews and the people that we've met in the process, We've become very good friends. <laughs> we have. So, Jonathan, what have been some of your favorite moments on the show? You know, for me, Shan, I uh, I appreciate that this is, you know, we keep it upbeat. We keep it positive. It's We keep the spotlight on the great things that you can experience in Cookville, the success of our, our students and faculty and alums. But we've also had some really kind of deep conversations, some of which have been a little bit emotional. Uh, our conversation with Dr. Catherine Godis, who is a piano professor here at Tennessee Tech and the widow of a Holocaust survivor. Uh, her husband, uh, she told us the story, was imprisoned in a Nazi concentration camp, liberated and lived until I believe 2007. That was so meaningful for me. Uh, it was also really powerful to talk with Morris Irby about being the first black baseball player recruited to Tennessee Tech. And I loved our President's Day episode with Cheryl Montgomery and Penny Judd, two Golden Eagles who served our country in presidential administrations on opposite sides of the aisle. And I, I really think when you listen to that conversation, no matter your politics, you just find yourself rooting for them both. Uh, but what about you, Sham? Well, I have so many. And I guess one of the things is just making new friends and new connections through an interview. You get to know someone so much more deeply when you're asking them these personal questions and these meaningful answers that they're giving you. And I guess a, a big thing to me, interviewing people that I work with on a regular basis, you know, um, when I interviewed uh, Mayor Porter and Mayor Wheaton, and these are people that I interchange with, you know, all week, every week, but to hear answers from even their past life, you know, just, just their younger years and, and how things have impacted them, just let you know them a little better. But I'll, I'll say a big standout to me was interviewing former president of WCTE PBS, Becky Magura, who has moved on for, to Nashville Public Television. We've been dear friends for a very long time. And of course, me working with PBS um, on multiple programs and projects and shows, I've always looked up to Becky because she is, I guess, a people person in a way where she dives deeper. She she tries to kind of find that deeper question within the question. And to interview her in return and do the reverse to her, um, it was just um it was it was just a, a switch there that I, I didn't anticipate. And so when she came up on our list to interview, um it just meant a lot to me. It was kind of when uh, your career kind of takes a a complete turn around, turnabout. And it was an unexpected twist that I we both relished. Uh, she's not used to being interviewed. She's, you know, the one that normally does the interview. And and I just enjoyed that so very much. Yeah, it was a lot of fun to turn the tables on her and make her the interviewee instead of the interviewer. And also, Shan, only you could have gotten Mayor Wheaton to tell us that in, a, in another life, she would be a New York City Rockette. That was breaking <laughs> that news. That was a real highlight. <laughs> <laughs> we still hold that against her. <laughs> Well, we've got two season finale worthy guests on the show today. First, we're talking with Tennessee Tech alumna, former Tech staff member, and winner of the 2024 Mandala Award at Window on the World, Caitlin Sawyer. Now, Caitlin is someone who truly sets the standard for volunteerism and living wings up in the community. She is amazing. I can't wait for that conversation. Now, next up, we're going to be talking with 2021 Tech graduate and the administrator for the Tennessee Legislative Internship Program at the Tennessee General Assembly in Nashville, the very talented and passionate J.R. Russell. Sham, the Legislative Internship Program is something that meant a lot to me as a tech student. We have six great students going through the program right now, 
and I'm really excited to hear from JR about his experience both as an intern and now leading those same interns as program administrator. What a great experience for him. I'm looking forward to it as well. Let's go ahead and kick things off with our first guest, the always lovely Caitlin Sawyer. Welcome back to College Town Talk. Our first guest today is a Tennessee Tech alumna, former Tech staff member, and a former director of Workforce Development and Education for the Cookville Chambers Highlands Economic Partnership. But more than that, Caitlin Sawyer is a bridge builder and people lover. During her years working at Tech, Caitlin helped launch the university's food pantry and backpack project, mentored students in the Service Learning Center, and helped facilitate the annual Window on the World Intercultural Festival, an event that has always remained close to her heart. And while Caitlin now serves as Talent Development Director for the Rutherford County Chamber of Commerce, she was back in Tennessee's college town just days ago to receive the prestigious Mandala Award at this year's Window on the World Festival. When presenting her with the award, Dr. Rob Owens described Caitlin as, quote, a shining example of inclusivity, passionate friendship, and community care, and praised her for opening minds in an ever-narrowing world. What an honor and so well-deserved. Caitlin, welcome to College Town Talk. Thank you for having me today. Caitlin, there's so much we want to ask you, but let's start with Window on the World. Now, this event has been something that you've obviously cared deeply about since you were a student. So you've been a steering committee member, assistant coordinator, and coordinator for the whole shebang. So I'm sure it meant so much to you to come back to Window on the World this year as the guest of honor to receive the Mandala Award. Now, we should tell our listeners, it is given every year to someone who's recognition of the world as one, a circle of humanity, has led to international activism and friendship in the Upper Cumberland. What a big statement. Now, tell us first about your connection to this annual event, and second, how it felt to receive such a wonderful award. Thank you. Yes, uh, this festival has meant so much to me. I've been a part of it since 2011, actually. I was a junior in college at Tennessee Tech, and I took a cultural diversity and cross-cultural communications class just as an elective. Um, I was from a very small town and had not been exposed to a lot of diversity growing up. My family, you know, we traveled some, but I knew there was a lot more that I needed to learn about the world, that I wanted to learn about the world and other people, um, not only for myself, but to just give back and, and know how to be there for others. And so in my time in that class, I met some of the most amazing people from all over the world. We truly were a diverse classroom. Um some of these people became my friends, dearest friends. They became mentors to me, um, but ultimately they gave us a safe space. We created a safe space where we were able to talk with one another about where we grew up, things that we experienced in our lives, our different backgrounds. And so um, I very much enjoyed learning from them and growing from them, and they impacted my life immeasurably. And so taking what I learned from them and just throughout my career and personal life, I've always tried to live um, and show others respect and give them the dignity that they deserve. One of the best ways I think we've come together and I've made some, uh, some of these friends has been through volunteering and giving back in the community. I think that's one of the best ways to kind of break down some of that perceived division. And so um, it's just something Something I've tried to embed throughout my life, or especially since that class. Uh, so when they gave me the call and told me that I had received, I'd be the recipient of the Mandala Award this year at the WOW Festival. I actually, well, I cried first, if we're being perfectly honest. I cried, um, just tears of joy. I questioned a little bit whether or not maybe I was worthy of receiving it. They're the folks that had received this recognition prior to me have done some incredible work, not only locally, but globally as well. Um, but in just talking through that and, and thinking about being 
kind of following in those footsteps and being in that group with those people. It was just a tremendous honor. I hope I always live up to um, to what that award means and impact others and encourage others to do the same. Well, Caitlin, I, I love your comments about how volunteerism can help break down divisions. And you have done a lot of volunteerism, not just with Window on the World. Uh, you were really a rock star volunteer throughout your years in Cookville. You served on the boards of Impact Cookville and the Putnam County Food Council. Uh, you, uh, I believe, still are a TN Achieves mentor. You co-founded the Highlands Economic Partnerships YP Highlands Initiative for young adults in the region. You are a court appointed special advocate or CASA volunteer, and the list goes on. So two questions. Uh, first, in all your volunteerism, what are the causes or moments that you have found most rewarding? And second, how do you determine where to spend your time and energy volunteering while making sure that you're not depleting yourself? Because there are a lot of needs out there and it can be hard to choose where to invest your passions. Uh, so what's your advice? Well, I have to say that anytime I'm able to give back to others or the community, it feels rewarding. So it's, it's really hard to pinpoint a specific moment um, that really stands out. But if I have to pick one project that I'm most proud of, I would have to say the Tennessee Tech Food Pantry. I worked alongside some incredible people on this initiative. Uh, Mark Burnett, who was the vice president of student affairs at the time, um, he had this vision. He was, you know, hearing from students, um, some that were struggling with food insecurity, and it was impacting their ability to continue their classes and and just uh, really impacting their day-to-day -day life. You think about when you're hungry, what that does to you. And so um, he worked alongside Michelle Huddleston, who is very near and dear to my heart. I miss her greatly. She was the director of service learning at the time. And I had the opportunity to work under them and serve as a um, AmeriCorps VISTA. So uh, that's a volunteer, volunteer in service to America. And so the project itself was building out a food pantry on campus to serve students. And that's exactly what we did. We started small. It was in a tiny little closet in Foundation Hall that we served just a couple days a week to students. And then by the time I uh, left the university in 2017, it was um, in a large three-bedroom apartment in Tech Village. We had a garden outside. We were doing a food salvage program partnered with the cafeteria at Tech. So students were involved from different disciplines. We wrote grants, uh, collaborated on different projects together. And so to really see that project grow and the impact that it made on students um, was something that was super special to me. We even saw students that we served while they were in school um, in undergrad come back and donate after they graduated. And so to know that it meant enough to them and it helped them, and then they were able to come back and give to other students was a beautiful thing. As far as choosing where I give my time and not depleting myself, you know, I've never really given a lot of thought. I, I've volunteered in so many different areas. It's food insecurity. It could be um, disaster relief. I think, I, I don't know, I think I'm just called to certain things, something, thing, some things that I hear about just kind of tug at my heartstrings. And I think, oh, I want to get involved with that if, if I can. Uh, I think Cookville is a it's a tremendous community. And I think it's full of people that want to give back. And so there's a lot of opportunity to give if, uh, if one wants to. And so I've been very blessed to do that. And I can't say that I've ever really felt depleted. Um, you know, you volunteer sometimes and you give a long day or you have a long day and you might feel tired at the end of it. But I think more than that, you feel uplifted and it's great to be around like-minded people who love to give back. So I can't, I can't really say that I've ever felt depleted, but I, I think that's something you have to think about. You can give so much of yourself that that's, that, that becomes an issue sometimes, but um, yeah, food pantry would definitely be something that I'll forever be thankful. I was a part of that team that, that launched that uh, and just would encourage others to get involved in the community. Cookville's a great place to do it. Well, Caitlin, this is a perfect segue into my question. We've talked a lot on this program about the importance of mentorship, and we've heard so many wonderful tributes between 
mentors and their mentees. I know someone who has been a true mentor in your life is Dr. Ada Haynes. She's been a professor of sociology at Tennessee Tech for more than 30 years. But specifically to you, what has been the impact of her teaching and guidance on you personally and professionally? You have to cut me off on this one. I could talk about her forever. <laughs> So she actually was the professor of the cultural diversity and cross-cultural communications class that I mentioned. So that's where we initially met in 2011. And I'll never forget walking into that class. I was so nervous. Um, I've always been on the shyer side and I was very quiet. And so for whatever reason, I've, I've I don't know that I'll ever know the true reason, but she really took me under her wing. She was also from a small town, um, so maybe that was a part of it. We had both kind of grown up very similarly in that regard. And so I think she did see my eagerness to learn, but I think she also realized I was very nervous and very um, uh quiet and a little nervous to be super involved in the course and speak out. And so um, she just really, oh gosh, she took time to meet with me and talk with me and learn about my life and my aspirations and goals. And she's helped me achieve things along the way and given me confidence when I didn't have confidence in myself. Um, she's taught me so much. I, I tell her she's worn a lot of hats in my life. She's been a professor. She's been a mentor. And now she's a really dear friend of mine. We see each other as much as we possibly can. Um, but I really... I have so much that I could thank her for, for just giving me a chance and and pushing me outside of my comfort zone sometimes. There were things that I might not want to do or or wanted to do, but were, you know, would have been too scared to to do on my own. And she was right there along the way saying, you can do it and you should do it. And um and it was it was because of her that I actually learned about the AmeriCorps Vista position with Michelle in the Service Learning Center. So she made that connection. And from then on, my entire career has just been built off that opportunity. And it really taught me a lot about who I am as a person and who I want to continue to be and who I want to grow to be. And so she's she's been um, a huge impact in my life. That's such a great tribute. And I've traded a couple of emails with Dr. Haynes leading up to the Mandala Award award ceremony. And so I know that she would say uh, all of those same things about you, Caitlin. And it uh, leads me to my next question. I know that you are still very missed by your former tech colleagues and the folks over at the Highlands Economic Partnership, but you're doing some pretty cool things down in Murfreesboro with the Rutherford County Chamber of Commerce. Uh, tell us about your role as talent development director for the chamber. I, I first have to say I miss Cookville a lot too. It's going to always hold a special place in my heart and I visit as much as I can. I'm not that far and a lot of my good friends still live there, so I'm there as much as possible. Um, but my role at the Rutherford County Chamber is actually very similar to what my role was with the Highlands Economic Partnership. That's where I learned that I loved the um, education and workforce development space. I learned a lot while at the Highlands, and that enabled me to um, grow and, and do that work in a larger community. And so a lot of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis is work with um, our partners in the community, K-12 education, post-secondary education, area employers, nonprofit agencies, and we're really just trying to make sure that we're building a pipeline of students that are prepared for the jobs in the region. So that could be building out um, education or training programs. It could be very specific events that we're supporting for them to gain um, soft skills. It could be a myriad of things. And of course, we support adult learners too. Um, I, one thing that I love about this work is if there's a need that's identified through our partners, we're very flexible and we can make changes as needed so we can address certain things. Um, but it's been great to do that in Rutherford County. I really love it here. Um, I love I loved my time in Cookville. We worked with, you know, six different counties in, in workforce. And here it's just the one. And it's it's crazy to see how large, um, how we do this work in a large community. So, um, but I'll, you know, I, the foundation was built in Cookville and that's where I learned it. Well, Caitlin, obviously Rutherford is blessed to have you. And it was definitely our loss to lose you. But we appreciate your time today, but we like to end each interview with the same question. So here we go. What is one way that Tennessee Tech has impacted your life? Oh my goodness, it has impacted my life in so many ways. Um, if I had to think of one, I'm going to be broad 
because I think I can group a lot under this. I would say relationships. Um, I made a lot of amazing relationships while I was there. We talked about mentors. I met, met some incredible people who have mentored me throughout my time at Tech, throughout my um, early career, and just as just as an adult, young adult. Um, I've met incredible people in the community that have enabled me to get involved and taught me a lot about civic engagement, um, people that I would have not otherwise met unless I had gone, you know, moved to Cookville and attended Tennessee Tech. And last, but certainly not least, I have built friendships with people that, you know, Sometimes you meet people and it's you just kind of pass ships passing in the night. You might be two students at tech that work on a project together. And then that's maybe the last time you see them. But the things that we uh, the way I think that we engaged at tech and the way that they encourage students to work together and collaborate together and support one another. I've made lifelong friends. So the relationships that I've made while I was there, um, I'll forever be grateful for. Well, Caitlin, thank you so much for being our guest today on College Town Talk. Thank you both so much. Welcome back to College Town Talk. Have you ever had a resolution passed in your honor by the Tennessee General Assembly? Well, I have not, but our next guest has. J.R. Russell is a proud Tennessee Tech alumnus who just graduated in 2021 and is already serving as administrator of the Tennessee Legislative Internship Program at the Tennessee General Assembly. Now that's also known as our state legislature in Nashville, Tennessee, of course. Now that new role shouldn't be too much of a reach for JR. As a tech student, he was an intern at the state legislature himself working for Tennessee State Senator Ken Yeager. Now, JR parlayed that internship into a full time staff role as Senator Yeager's executive assistant before being promoted to serve as administrator of the internship program just last month. Now, in this particular role, he assists the program's director, Shirley Frierson, in supervising legislative interns from around the state to ensure they have a positive learning experience. And I love everything about this, including the six interns sent to the state legislature this semester from Tennessee Tech. Now, as if that's not enough, during his year at Tech, JR was also a student orientation assistant or an SOA. But don't take my word on any of this. Just look up Senate Joint Resolution 1436, which praised JR as, and I quote here, clearly deserving of the respect, admiration, and commendation of the General Assembly, and as a public servant of the highest order. So it's no surprise it passed the State Senate unanimously. JR, welcome to College Town Talk. Thank you, Shan. I'm so excited to be here with uh, both of you all. One thing that I would be remiss if I didn't mention um, was before I started at Tennessee Tech, I um, spent two years at Roan State Community College, and that gave me such a great foundation before I transferred. So had I not had those relationships and, and knowing about how uh, a higher education institution works, um, I don't think any of this would have been possible. So shout out, shout out to all those folks at Roan State. I love everything about what we've talked about so far, so I can't wait for this interview to continue. Now, JR, you've already established quite the career for yourself in state politics to be so young. You've also managed to settle into what is probably one of the last apolitical jobs in the General Assembly, serving as administrator of the Tennessee Legislative Internship Program. What made you want to step into that role? So I'm really, really grateful to uh, serving for almost three years with Senator Yeager um, as an intern and, the, and then as his assistant just gave me a, a, a really great opportunity to learn like the nuts and bolts of, of legislation um, and um, serving the, the constituency, which is, is their, their main role. Um, Cindy Yeager always said uh, constituents come first and, and we live by that. But as the, as a student in the internship program, um, I, I really was able to, to get a lot of benefit from um, 
getting that firsthand experience and 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 making relationships. Um, relationships are a huge part of what goes on in the General Assembly, and, and those relationships have have followed me into um, a variety of different opportunities. So when the the opportunity to uh, have a new position arose, um, I was really ready for a new challenge and interested in helping students get that same experience that I had w- um, when I was an, an intern in 2021. Well, let's talk more about the internship program, JR because you know that I am a big believer in the Tennessee Legislative Internship Program. These are paid internships that open students up to so many amazing career opportunities. Uh, I am forever grateful for my semester as an intern on the Hill, and I know uh, even Dr. Lauren Harding, our assistant professor of political science who coordinates Tech's interns for this program each year, is herself a proud former legislative intern. So for tech students listening that are not familiar, give us your elevator pitch on the Tennessee Legislative Internship Program. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, I've had many conversations with Dr. Harding about, about her time. Uh, and it, 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 now it's very interesting to kind of compare um, her experiences and, and my experiences. Tennessee Legislative Internship Program, it's, it's very fast paced. Um, it's 16 weeks during the spring semester of each year that coincides when the legislator is in session. So these interns are going to be placed in, in offices with uh, elected officials and uh, from all across the state to, uh, to work in the Capitol and to learn and observe the legislative process. It's a great opportunity to put uh, the knowledge you've gained in the classroom to, uh, to use in, in real life and to build uh, meaningful relationships with your peers and state leaders. Um, and the, the college credit also is, is, a, is a great benefit as well. What a wonderful opportunity this is. Now, JR, we've got to talk about this resolution in your honor that sailed through the General Assembly. What an amazing experience that must have been. That's very, very unique. And of course, for those of you who may not know, these resolutions have to be sponsored by a member of the legislature. And I know that was something that Senator Ken Yeager wanted to do to honor you. And that truly is an honor. So what did that mean to you? And where is your copy of that resolution going to be hung in your house? So it was super special that that Senator Yeager took the time uh, to recognize um, my my service over the past few years. Um, it, it's a very busy time in the General Assembly as they're trying to go out. Uh, but being on the receiving end of an honor like that was, was a, a really great privilege. And I, I'm, I'm just really thankful for our, our relationship, both professionally and personally, and, and, and his friendship, honestly. So it, the resolution will definitely be dis- displayed in like a, a prominent area, um, and it should be a great conversation starter. Well, JR, it's getting to be the end of April, and summer will be here before we know it, which means two things. One, the adjournment of session for the year at the General Assembly, which I know all the staffers are excited about, and two, SOAR at Tennessee Tech, which of course is the university's annual summer student orientation, advisement, and registration. And SOAR doesn't happen without student orientation assistants, better known as SOAs. What was your experience like as an SOA back when you were a student? Absolutely. Um, so I uh, can truly say that being an SOA in the summer of 2020 um, was one of the most unique experiences I've ever, I've ever had. So I had applied to be um, an orientation assistant right after I transferred and was really kind of just looking for my new college family. Um, Coming from a community college, I I had a very close-knit group of people, and I wanted to continue that, um, where I could get plugged into everything that was going on on campus. As we were all learning about each other, uh, the curveball of COVID was um, certainly unexpected um, and greatly affected SOAR. Um, But I can say that, um, you know, dealing with all the different things associated with that and, and still continuing to have to have SOAR, it, it really did bring us together in ways. And our group, it, all the SOAs are, are, are really close knit, but um, I feel like our group was, was extra special. Um, so through Courtney and Jessica's leadership, we were able to pull off SOAR in, in spite of everything and, and leave a unforgettable experience. Uh, and now I'm, I'm starting to see some of my um, SOAR students are, are getting close to graduating, and um, it's just really great to, to be on the other end of that. Well, JR, I know, you know, we, we don't ask for trials and difficulties throughout our life, but trials and struggles often 
uh, help us navigate and make us stronger for future opportunities and challenges that we face in our life and in our work. So I'm sure that what you learned through that time will carry on throughout your career. And, uh, you know, you'll in comparison, sometimes I'll be like, hey, <laughs> this is difficult, but it's not at all like 2020. So uh, it, it literally kind of gives you a baseline to grow from. Now, if you've listened to our podcast before, you know what's coming because we like to end each interview with the same question. So here we go. What is one way that Tennessee Tech has impacted your life? Well, I kind of touched on this earlier, but really tech just helped me find um, another, a whole nother family. Um, so I've got so many coworkers. I've got several at the General Assembly and, and friends who have graduated that are now in Nashville running successful businesses or starting their own careers and in, in, in all kinds of, of, of different spaces. But Tech helped me earn my degree, but it also gave me just a, a huge network of folks that that you can rely on and, and and that, you know, we're united by by one thing, and that's that we're all a golden eagle. Um, so I, I, I couldn't have made a better decision in choosing to go to tech. And uh, I, I'm, I'm just really thankful for how for all of that played out. Well, JR, thank you so much for being our guest today on College Town Talk. Thank you both again for having me. Um, I had a really great time and it was it was um, very nice kind of walking down memory lane a little bit. And for our listeners, if you're a Tennessee Tech junior, senior or graduate student interested in applying for the Tennessee Legislative Internship Program for spring 2025, email Dr. Lauren Harding at lharding at tntech.edu. What a great way to end this season of the podcast. We want to thank Caitlin Sawyer and J.R. Russell for being our guests today on College Town Talk. I loved both of these conversations and both of these people. And we'd also love it if all of you listening would be sure to hit that subscribe button, leave us a review, and share this podcast with your friends. It all helps to spread the word about the great things happening right here in Cookville. Well, this is the part of the show where we usually say that we'll meet you back here next week. Uh, it's going to be a little bit longer than that. We're going to take some time off for the summer and return with all new episodes of the podcast this fall. Yeah, I'll be working on my tan. But until then, catch up on all your favorite moments of the show at tntech.edu forward slash college town talk. And we'll see you back here real soon. Have a great summer, everybody. College Town Talk is presented by Tennessee Tech University in partnership with the Cookville Putnam County Visitors Bureau. Your hosts are Jonathan Frank and Shan Stout, and original music is performed by Andrew Buckner. Visit us online at tntech.edu slash collegetowntalk.